All right, everybody. Glad to have you back. All right, so here's what our plan is for today. We're going to be going over a few things. Some of it's going to be review, which is perfect because you have a test coming up on Friday. <laughs> so we're going to review some of the stuff that we've already talked about a little bit, kind of get that fresh in your mind. That tends to be the things that people do more poorly on on tests and the things that we covered earlier on in the unit. So we'll do a little bit of review of that, and then we're going to talk about some new things, especially something kind of clear up some of the things that we're, um, people were struggling with a little bit. So to get started, we need a little bit of vocabulary. Um, two of the main terms that um, some people were still kind of a little bit confused by and didn't see really well were the terms we used to describe the different rows on the periodic table. So we got two possibilities for rows. We've got our vertical ones, the vertical columns up and down, and we've got the horizontal ones going across. There's two terms that are typically used for both of those rows. The vertical column up and down, sometimes we use the word family especially when we're talking about the groups that have uh, elements at the top of them as their name, like the boron group, sometimes it's called boron family, or the oxygen family, carbon family. But typically we use group is the most common one. So that one, that's why that one is missing in your sheet. It's also bolded up here. And then the other term for the horizontal rows going across, we, we know them as energy levels but they're also periods. And that's the most common term that we're gonna be using a lot going forward into not only just on the test probably on Friday, but also in um, other chapters as they come up, we'll be talking about periods on the periodic table. So hopefully you got those written down. Oh, I stole your sheet, didn't I? Any questions about group versus period? Make sure you know those. And we're gonna be going over those a lot. We're gonna be, I'll be referencing a lot of groups Talking about periods quite a bit going across. All right, next thing, property trends. So we've got to quickly review the property trends a little bit, so make sure you jot these down as we go. So atomic radius, which is the size of the atom, how big it is. Which I always wondered when I was in school, I was like, how do they figure that out? How do they know the, the size of the atom? I thought the atom was like kind of squishy and fuzzy. You know, how do they know how big it is? Because it can be bigger or smaller. They, they have a way x-rays get a picture of like how far apart the nuclei are and they just divide that distance yeah. our period trend though for atomic radius so as we're going across so all of these so make sure you re reference this down is that when we're talking a period trend we're talking going from left to right across the period left to right It'd be really confusing if uh, you thought it was right to left so it's left to right just like you would be reading a book. So the period trend as we go across the atoms gets smaller, which was weird. Thought that they were getting more particles, more protons, more neutrons, more electrons, so they're getting bigger. But it's because that nuclear charge getting stronger pulls those electrons in a little bit more tightly. And then the group trend, and group trend will always be from top down. Always a top down reference. Again, like you're reading a book. It's going to be from the bottom up, from the top down left or right. And that one, of course, makes sense. As we're going down, the atoms should get bigger because we're adding energy levels as we go. Our next thing we talked about was the shielding effect. So that's kind of the protecting and shielding the outermost electrons from the nucleus is the shielding effect. So there's other electrons in lower levels kind of blocking those outermost electrons from that power of the nucleus to attract it. So the period trend is constant. It doesn't really change. The shielding effect, you still have the same lower energy levels present as you go across the period because you're adding on to that one period as you're going. So you really don't affect the uh, shielding as you're going from left to right. But as we go down, of course, we increase because we're adding energy levels. We have more electrons and lower energy levels to help shield those outermost electrons. Bless you. Ionization energy, that's the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. So as we go across a period, it increases because those atoms are getting smaller. Small atoms, 
it's hard to pull electrons away because their electrons are closer to their nucleus. It's much more difficult to remove them. But as we go down a group, well, of course, that decreases because those electrons are now farther away. And they're also much more shielded. So the, the nucleus can't hold on to them as tightly. It doesn't take as much energy to remove them. And the next one was electron affinity. That's the amount of en energy that's involved with adding an electron to the outside of an atom. So the period trend increases as we go across from left to right. So that's the period trend, the group trend as you go down decreases. And our last one, electronegativity. So electronegativity is the ability to pull electrons toward you in a bond with another atom. So if you're a small atom, you're probably going to be able to do that. So that means right across the period it increases. The most electronegative element is fluorine. And going down a group, it decreases. So the least electronegative element is francium opposite ends of the periodic table. Makes sense. That's where metallic properties are more powerful as you go from right to left and down. So the lower corner of the periodic table is going to have much more metallic properties. The upper right-hand corner, ignoring the noble gases, are going to be more non-metal. So why are the trends the way that they are? So we talked about this a little bit in class. The reason is really two things. And it's the two things over and over again. Increasing nuclear charge across the period. So that causes those atoms to get smaller. Pull those electrons in more tightly. And that, of course, then means that your electronegativity is going to go up. means your electron affinity is going to be higher. Be able to pull electrons in easier. The other reason is because of that increasing shielding effect as you go down a group. So it's easier to remove electrons, so your ionization energy is going to be higher, or, or less, as you go down to the group. Electrons are further away from the nucleus and they're shielded by more and more electrons. Easier to remove. Oops, not too fast. Same thing over and over again. Why do we see the atomic radius getting smaller? Uh, increasing nuclear charge and not much of an effect from the shielding as we go across. Get a more shielding effect so the electron is farther away, at more energy levels farther away. It's the same reasoning over and over again for all of those trends. All right, so this next couple of slides, you don't have to write anything down. So you can kind of take a, take a break, just relax a little bit. Uh, we're going to kind of go through the periodic table, um, period by period, going across. And we're going to be looking in particular at the groups that we're really interested in, those representative elements. Those are the S block and the P block on the periodic table. The first two rows, and then the far right-hand side. So, first one we're going to look at, lithium is a, the first element in the second period. So we're going to start from left and go across to the right through the period. So. We definitely have the first energy level filled up, and now we're starting to fill up the second energy level. That's why it's in the second energy level, second period on the periodic table. Also given to you is the noble gas abbreviation. We want to look at that noble gas abbreviation a little bit because we're kind of going to be interested in those outermost electrons, the ones that you know, have been shielded by those lower energy electrons. Next element is beryllium. We just add an electron, 1s2, 2s2. Boron, we're adding another electron that goes into the P sublevel now. We've filled up the, the 2S, so now we go to the 2P. And so the rest of these are going to be going across the period, just filling up the P's. So 2S2, 2P, 2. 
2s2, 2p3, 2s2, 2p4, fluorine right at the end in the halogen group, 2s2, 2p5, and then of course we get to our noble gas, which in this case is neon so we're going across. So 2s2, 2p6. So take a look at that and kind of remember that pattern. It's kind of the same pattern going through 1s, 2s, then 2s, and then 1p, all the way down until we have the p completely filled up. We're going to look at the next one. Don't have to write anything down here either. The third period. So now once we get to the end of the, sec of the second period with neon, now we're going to go down and start with sodium. So we have sodium. So now neon is the one in the brackets because it's representing those lower energy levels. The first energy level and the second energy level. All the electrons that were put together in the first period and the second period of the periodic table. But we have 3s1. It's kind of similar to what lithium was. It was 2s1. Next up is magnesium. So we got 2s2, 2, 2, or 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Aluminum, we're going to start filling up the P's again. So it's always that same pattern. We remember that from the cheat pyramid. Until we get down to our noble gas again, argon. But that should look very familiar. The only thing that's different, we have a different noble gas here, and we have a different number in front of our S and P's. We have a different energy level, different period that we're talking about. So, I oh, know it's like beating a dead horse, but we're going to go to the next one. Don't have to write anything down here either. We're going to go to the fourth period, because the fourth period is a little bit different. So, the first element after we get done with our noble gas of argon in the third period is potassium. So, that doesn't look any different. I mean, it looks, that's ringing a bell at least. Calcium should also be familiar. Oh, but then, like I said, we're looking at the representative groups, the representative groups on the periodic table. So, the fourth period, though, has those transition metals in it. It's got some of the D block is present now. So as we go to the next element over, we've got to skip a whole bunch and get to gallium, GA over there. So we've, at, we've got the 3D10 in here, but we do have the 4P1. So that's kind of similar. There's only this one little thing that's a little different. But notice, the number that's in front is still a 3. That's a different energy level. It's in the fourth period of the periodic table, but it's from a different energy level. So if we keep going, we go through germanium, arsenic, selenium, bromine. Last is going to be krypton. So it's still a very similar pattern. The only thing that's different now is that we had to throw those, that 3D in there. But when we look at the actual outer energy level, the period that we're in for, it's still the same. S's are the same and the P's are the same. So we still have that same pattern. And that continues for all of those groups on the periodic table. Group 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, blah, 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 down to 8A. Any questions about that? All right, thinking, where are we going with this? Well, we're going here, valence electrons. So this you might want to write down. So valence electrons, if you haven't gotten this down in your notes, you'll want to write it down in your notes. You need to know it. What a valence electron is. Because the next several chapters are going to be all about the valence electron. What they're doing. These electrons are that outermost energy level. So it's the electrons on the energy level of the period that they're in. So we saw with some of them we had an energy level that was not from the period that it should be in. So that's kind of one of our issues we have to deal with. So our valence electrons are the ones with the highest number in front of that, those S level, those sublevels, the S and P. So when we look at the electron configuration of an element, you want to know what its valence electrons are. You're looking for that, that one number, that's that highest number that we can find. So it's the highest S and the highest P's. So it's always going to be an S or P. It's kind of a repeat of the first one there, so we don't have to write that. And lastly, it's not going to be a D or F. And you can probably just put a period there. 
the rest of this is just kind of explaining because if you remember we've we've seen that before that the transition metals in the middle are one energy level down and the three d's are in the fourth period the four d's are in the fifth period and then the f's those inner transition metals down at the very bottom they're two levels away so that bottom row is the four F's, but it's found within the sixth period. And then the five F's are found within the seventh period on the periodic table. So those we're not going to look at as our valence electrons, just those S and P ones. They're the ones that we're interested in. It's not to say that those D and F electrons are important from time to time. They are. But to simplify things, make things easier for us going forward, let's just worry about those S and Hoping everybody's okay with that. Gotta keep it as simple as we can. Okay, any questions about valence electron? All right. So, valence electrons and group properties. This is one thing we're gonna be kind of interested in. What's going on within those groups? And it's just the representative groups that we're gonna be interested in. So what do we have as far as valence electrons go with those particular groups? Get to far away. So I'm gonna write this down. In the next chart, I think coming up is the alkali metals. So that's group 1A. The electron configuration, this is just a generic electron configuration. It's that NS1. That's its outermost valence electron configuration. So it's going to have some sort of like noble gas bracket in front of it. And then what I'm coming after is going to be some number. That's what the N means. Some number, the highest energy level of the